Hey guys, it's Terry here. Um, today's video, I just want to show you how to set up a Revit file if you're new to the program and um, some items that may help you get your project set up initially so you can go ahead and just start modeling your building and setting up your documents. Um, as you'll see here, uh, my screen is gray. I might just have that turned on so it's a little bit easier for you to see my mouse. Um, but you can easily change that to whatever your preference is if you come into the file tab go into options and graphics you can select all your items here when you have items selected um, for me they will just turn blue if I have any issues when I finish a command um, they'll turn orange and then there's some additional color options here that you can choose from um, I already have my project open and ready to go but if you're looking to start a new project um, and you are advanced enough to know how a template works, um, you can come into a new project and it'll give you this file here and you can select from one of these whether you're making a mechanical drawing, a structural drawing, architectural and so on. Um, if you have one set up um, for your projects already, you just hit browse and you go and you can find that template. Uh, this window here is a, is a is a templates already set up by Revit um, that you can choose from. Um, we're gonna go ahead and not use that since we already have one open. So this is where you would go and just find your template. Um, a few uh, items that may be helpful right off the bat. Make sure you aren't losing anything while you're modeling. Um, you, you can go ahead and set up some elevation views. Um, this will let you view the front, sides, and back of your building. Um, uh, it doesn't really matter where you start your model um, in the space here you can just go ahead and click um, if you do move your mouse around the project will have a center um, somewhere where you can um, kind of rotate around the point they'll automatically fix for you but if that's not the case um, you can just put four on each side and you'll just come back here and you'll click on the circle um, if you were to click on this, that just shows you where the elevation is being cut and how far you're seeing of that elevation. So if I have a wall here and then a jog and another wall here, I'll see it. But if I were to cut it back, you won't. And um, we'll get a little bit more into that later. Um, so if this is not the proper uh, direction for your elevation, you just click that and then you would un uncheck the other option. It's just gonna tell you that you're deleting that view, which is fine. You just go ahead and click off that. And then we'll do the same thing for the rest of these. So I'm creating a north, south, east, and west elevation views here. Um, sometimes if you're new to the program and you have trouble selecting items, if you're, say I'm zoomed out a little bit and I'm having trouble picking one or the other, if you just tab over top of the items, they'll cycle. Um, if I'm working on a plan, I've got dimensions and sections and windows and doors and there's a bunch of things overlapping. Um, you, if you can't get close enough, you can just tab through the different items until you see what you have selected. Um, if you can't tell what's selected, if you see that little white window below my mouse, that's telling me what I have um, as an option to click on. So once we have that, we'll go to one of these elevation views. If you can, you can either um, double tap on it or you can click the tip, right click, go to elevation view, or um, once you set all those up, your elevation views will start to populate um, that category underneath your project browser. Um, as you can see, they kind of have random names. Um, you can go back and add them or change the names at a later point. Um, if you're tedious about your namings, um, you can immediately change them. But for just the conversation to make this video, this is just where they will be located and um, the generic names that they are started with. Um, so now I'm in my north elevation here. We will go ahead and change the name. All you have to do is just right click, rename, and we'll just call this North Building Elevation. Um, generic for majority models. Um, you will see there's a temporary level one and a CNPY level. I do not know why 
these automatically populate the drawings I'm sure it could be fixed um, but it's a very small matter of just selecting them and uh, deleting them from the project um, it doesn't really bother me too much that it takes two clicks to get rid of them to, to change um, so now you'll see here we have level one and main level set up if you already know what your levels are going to be you can go ahead and you can click on the level line here and that will give you the options to change um, you can just click on that say I wanted to set 12 feet if I know my floor to floor height is going to be 12 I can just go ahead and set that up um, you can copy these um, if I want to maintain my 12 to 12 I can just click from main go to here or I can simply just click on this drag it up and type 12 feet do the same thing I don't want those overlapping levels so we'll undo okay so now I've got three levels set up here um, for the sake of clarifications we will change this one to say roof level that way I have three first second floor and roof defined ready to go and this will be important for um, naming your plans um, and making sure all your views coordinate correctly another quick tip about levels um, as you get into more projects you'll establish your bottom of header heights um, you may have like a porch that is down lower than your main level and you may want to show that um, I will add that just for, so I have a, a porch down six inches from my main level and you see and now I have these overlaps um, that is not ideal so what you want to do is if you click on this level line you will see a very small lightning bolt symbol almost and that's going to be uniform for a lot of other um, view types and certain commands um, you can see it's saying to add an elbow so what that does is it breaks the line here so I can move it um, so now that I've broken it I'll we'll drag this back up and you'll see that it has created an elbow here too so I can separate these levels out now you can drag these out as far as you want something like that or if you're fine with it being there um, it's really preference or maybe you have an office that has a standard or if you're in school maybe um, your professor wants to see it a certain way very small point doesn't really matter a whole lot but that's just that's what that does um, so if you've got a lot of levels maybe your view scale is very small um, that's where you can go to change it um, moving forward we will go and look at our plans again okay so now you say okay Terry you see your your main level and your site plan um, site plan doesn't have anything on it yet um, that we won't get to that until later videos but if you go back to my main level you're saying okay um, and now I want to make sure my floor plans are set up so if you go up into view very top of your screen it'll pull up all your view options here so what I want to do here is I want to go to plan views and I want to add the second level and the roof plan that I just created so the bonus of creating a level is it establishes a floor plan that the program automatically knows that okay this will probably be a plan view at some point um, so all you do is you go in here you click floor plan and as you can see um, there's an extra level in here that we don't need but you'll see my level 2 and my roof level um, so you can either select one individually um, and click OK or if you hold control you can select um, individual ones if you hold shift it will select everything there um, if you want to remove something, um, oops, did not mean to do that. We'll just go back here. So we'll just select everything with the two options: control, pig level one, control, select roof level, and that will create my plans, as you can see here. Okay. Now I want to touch on the properties and the project browser here very briefly. Um, you may start a project. Um, I know there's some issues. This may be closed out by accident. Um, we'll close it out just for the sake of talking about it. Um, so here, if you just go into your your model, doesn't matter. It can be a floor plan, elevation, 
um, just right click somewhere in your project off of an element and you can just click properties and that will bring your properties bar back up if you right click again you get a browser and you say project browser that will bring back up my levels here and then these you're able to stretch as wide as you want control everything um, if, if you want to see all your properties here but you want your project browser somewhere else you can drag it um, snap it to the other side there's a bunch of different areas you can put it you can put it across the entire bottom um, I like to keep mine kind of stacked on the side here um, so that's just what I'll do I can get it to align to the bottom here okay so now I just have them kind of cycled here So if you were to combine them, you can also just move everything across, um, really place them, manage them, that way there's more space for you to work, and whatever you want. Again, if you want to close it, you just close it. So again, you should click on properties, and then browser, project browser, and there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and move my project browser back down here to the bottom and we will leave it like that for now <laughs> so now I've got my floor levels created here uh, roof level main level level 2 uh, another really important item you want to make sure is set up is your line weights um, this is important because when you go to print um, Revit has line weights set up for you here so that means um, when a, a number two line is printed at a quarter inch scale it'll be 0 0.007 inches in thickness um, and then you'll see it, it changes um, at an eighth inch at number two it's 0 0.005 um, these are important because it will not clutter up your drawings it'll make sure that your lines are scaling as you grow um, your views whether they get bigger for detail, smaller for a site plan. You don't want a super heavy line on your site plan if it's going to be a heavy line on your main plan. Um, you kind of want to differentiate between those. Um, so I would recommend either going to Reddit or looking online for some different guides. Um, if you pause the video, you can check these out and film out yourself. Um, this would be a very important item that you would want to include in your template. That way you don't have to change it every time. It's already set up and ready for you to go. That goes the same for your floor plans, um, creating initial elevation views. If you can set those up in a template, just load that template up, you'll be ready to go. You won't have to worry about doing that every time you start a new project. Okay, moving forward, I'm just going to briefly show you how to work some other items in the program um, in terms of getting your project ready to go. Um, your sections would be under view as well and those are pretty straightforward again um, you just click and draw them you can flip your sections if you want to show a different way you can extend how far your section sees um, your section is always going to cut on this line um, but if you have a wall back here you don't want to see it, you can cut it but if you want to see that wall maybe there's a door there and you want to see that door you would extend this beyond um, we see this cut mark here again. Um, this would create a jog in your section. Um, uh, that is actually not exactly what it does, so that just that cuts your section line. Um, if you have a main level um, and you don't want the section line going all the way across, maybe you have a lot of uh, line work in your drawing, you don't want to see that, you can just pull them off to the side. Um, that way. If you want to reconnect them, you just connect them again. Um, if you do want to split the section with the jaw, like I was just talking about, that is the split segment here. Um, that you just click on the section and you draw it that way. And then when you click on the section, um, you're able to control where that jog is, if it wants to go back this way. Um, you really have a lot of freedom with how this does. If you want to go back to not being split, you just align it again and it's a straight section. So 
another item here um, you would want to add to your templates. Um, if you go to your floor plans, this is where you would change your scaling underneath your project properties. You will need to go to each individual view to change these. Um, there is a way to make all your plans uniform. Um, that would be a view template. Um, that is a more extensive um, aspect of creating these projects. Um, I'll make a video on that another time. Um, but this is essentially creating a view template inside your template that will make sure that all your plans show the same amount of information, all your elevations, sections, 3D views show the same amount of information. Um, if you want a specific 3D view three times and you don't want to have to turn off all your elements under your graphics and um, your graphic overrides and visibility, um, you would just create a template to manage that. Um, just I'll let you look at it really briefly. If I want an architectural plan, I would come in here and want all my plans to be at a quarter inch scale. I would set my display to normal, my detail to fine, and then I would come in here and you can pick and choose what items you don't want to be shown. You have model categories, um, which would be like your 3D elements, your annotation categories, which would be like tags, um, dimensions, uh, callouts, your section cut marks, your elevation cut marks, and then you have your analytical model categories, your imported model categories. If you were to have a um, imported AutoCAD file or a Revit file, that's where that would be. And then you have filters. So moving on from that, um, we'll just say OK. And kind of briefly going down the rest of the um, view template you have model display, so you have hidden line, um, shaded, realistic color, wireframe. Um, if you're not too sure what those are, these are just different ways to view the model. Hidden line is always the preferred way to go. Wireframe means that every element in the project is going to turn into a bunch of lines and boxes essentially, and it will look pretty crazy. If you work on wireframe regularly, you're a madman. And I commend you for doing that, but it's just absolutely hard to work in. Um, so hidden line is going to be always the go-to. Um, shaded is just going to match whatever materials you may have assigned. Um, realistic color is going to try to, or consistent colors, it's just going to try to make everything uniform and then realistic colors will try to match um, a really generic color based on whatever material you have assigned. It's very similar to shaded. Um, you can go in and mess around with those two and see what they look like, but um, in terms of maybe getting a drawing exported for a review or to show a client, um, I, I would almost stay away from all these unless you're actually going to render that view. Um, these are very, very rudimentary. Um, I would take the time to do a rendering before showing one of these first, even if it's just a really quick five minute rendering. I would always first um, choose hidden line. And then you have a bunch of other options here. Um, like I said, we'll make this into another video, but just to give you a general overview of what that is. Okay, so now we have a, a pretty good start to our Revit model here. We can go to our 3D view up top here. Um, we don't have anything drawn. Um, if I were to show my levels, um, you would you would see them here. Um, they'd kind of make like a, a V almost. They'd show you where they are located. Uh, like that. I have them turned off um, for the sake of modeling. And 3D can be just extra lines you're trying to see through. Um, but that's what they look like. And you can see your levels there. Um, so that's, that's basically our brief introduction to setting up a project. Um, our next video will get it a little bit more into modeling and um, how walls, doors, and windows work, um, how to manipulate all those different items. Um, if you guys have any questions for me or maybe you have a, an issue that you're trying to work through with Revit, um, drop it down in the comments. And if you guys like this video, um, please be sure to leave me a like on the video. And if you'd like to see more content, content uh, you can go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys and have a great evening.